Welcome or welcome back everybody. This is Structed and today we're going to talk about the section modulus. So the section modulus is this quantity right here, S or SX. The section modulus is equal to the, cross that out, it's equal to the moment of inertia, which we talked about last time, divided by the distance out to the ultimate fiber or the extreme fiber. So if we look here on this little rectangular cross section, there is our centroid. And we've got a distance C up to the, oh, C should not be C, C should be Y. We've got a distance C up to our stress point here. That distance goes from the neutral axis, and as long as we are elastic, um, we haven't exceeded the yield stress of the material, then the stress is proportional to that distance from the neutral axis. So the, mo the maximum stress here is at distance y, which is the maximum distance c from the neutral axis. So if we take this equation up here, stress in the x direction is equal to the applied moment m which is this right here times the distance up to the fiber that we're interested in divided by the moment of inertia and if we are looking for the extreme stress or the ultimate fiber stress there Sometimes this is denoted as sigma b or sigma f. Uh, we're going to then be looking at m y over i, which can be rewritten as m over s. And this s is related to the coordinate system. So there's an s x. It's i x divided by y. There is also an SY, which is your IX divided by X, or your IY divided by X, it would be in this direction. And in this case, I'm just putting SXX, right? But we could very easily have a situation where, say, we have an asymmetric section like this, and the neutral axis is located somewhere up in here. And the distance to the extreme fiber in one direction, y plus, is much shorter than the distance to the extreme fiber in the other direction. Here, we've got a y minus. So here, really, we would be getting an sxx plus and an s x x minus so if we know that this shape has just pulling numbers out of nowhere here an i x x of 10 inches to the fourth and we've applied a moment of 100 pound inches and we've got these y distances here we'll say that y plus is equal to one inch and y minus is equal to three inches. Well, s x positive is going to be this m over s. It's going to be, or not m over s, it's going to be i over y, i over y, and this will be y plus. So i over y positive is equal to 10 inches to the fourth divided by one inch s x x plus is equal to 10 inches to the third power similarly s x x minus is equal to i over y minus 10 inches to the fourth i could have picked rounder numbers but that's all right s x x minus is equal to 
3.33 repeating inches cubed, right? And if our moment here, our applied moment say is like this, where we're putting the top in compression and the bottom in tension, then the maximum tensile stress that we're going to experience here is going to be m over s x x negative because we're going down to that bottom end there so it's going to be 100 pound inches divided by 3.33 repeating just cubed maximum tensile stress is equal to Three thirty. Uh, what were my units? PSI, which is nothing, nothing at all. Um, similarly, this compressive stress, the ultimate compressive stress, or not ultimate, but the peak compressive stress in the top fiber up here is going to be S X X plus is equal to one hundred pound inches over 10 inches cubed. Our compressive stress is only 10 PSI, which again, much lower. Maybe I should have called this kip inches or whatever. But this can be important because tensile buckling of this doesn't matter. It, it's not a thing. This is going to be limited by the yield stress. But up on this edge, you're potentially going to have buckling concerns where this could bow down as it gets stressed under compression. And that could result in a loss of capacity long before we hit the actual tensile yield capacity of the material. Or this could be made out of something that doesn't have the same yield stress in tension and compression. So it's important to keep straight your tension versus compression that's going on. Know that when you're looking at a small element under tension, you're going to be limited by the yield stress. But when you're looking at a small element under compression, likely there are buckling checks that you'll at least need to do to cross that off. If you like this video, please let me know in the comments below. Like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to check out the 15% off link in the description. That's going to get you 15% off any exam prep and review materials for your FEPE SE license exams. Uh, that's all from PPI2Pass. Thanks again.